Welcome to the People, Planet, Profit podcast. I'm Hayley Jarrick, CEO of the Supply Chain Sustainability School, and today I'm joined by Katrina Nash, who's the Director at Affinity Connection. Welcome, Katrina. Hi, Hayley. Thanks for having us. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started and talk about a bunch of fun, cool things. So um, Katrina and I are connected through the ACE Hub, which is the Australian Circular Economy Hub, um, which is a platform and connecting body that was set up um, uh, by Planet Arc uh, with some funding from a few different people around trying to get people through the Australian circular economy, connecting with each other and promoting each other. And that's where we've sort of joined forces. Um, and so today, um, Katrina is going to be talking to us um, about her wonderful circular business. Um, but for those of you who have never heard of you before, a fitting connection. What do, What is it? What do you do? Yeah, we're a bit of a, we do a lot of, quite a few things. So we started with a, a school program called Fundraising with Purpose, and that has slowly developed and, and morphing a little bit. Um, and then we started bringing in incursions um, or workshops that we do at libraries and cancel events. Uh, and that's what we've been sort of focusing on for the last 12 months. Uh, and then we, we've come back to full swing back to our fundraising with purpose because we're really passionate in that space. We want to see students um, learn more about the textile waste issues we have uh, and learn and see the textiles as a bit of a resource. And we've recently partnered with a textile waste company um, or cycling company called Up Apparel, sorry, Upcycle for Better, um, where like and many other textile recovery or textile recycling companies, they will recycle our textiles. But what I really, really love about these guys is in before they get to recycling, they sort, they take out things that can be resold, they take away things and repair things that can be repaired. And then what can't be sold or repaired as it is, gets um, upcycled first. Only then does it go into the recycling pro processes. And the, so how about 500 streams, which we really love. Um, we've had other ones that anywhere between five and, and 30 streams. So we really love partnering with these guys. So it's making, and it, it's a nice little collection um, partnership because it makes our school program a lot easier to roll out for schools. Wow, I mean, like it's you're hitting all the right buttons there. So I think that um, one of the biggest challenges I face when I talk to somebody about the circular economy is they go straight to recycling, right? Like it's just mm. that whole great. How are we going to turn? How are we going to take things out of landfill and recycle them? Um, and so you're right. I think you once once you find providers that go, okay, but first, is it good enough to be resold as it is? Let somebody else have another crack at this before we have to turn it into something. And repair, repair is the biggest bugbear of mine. Um, yeah that, you know, I think people these days have completely lost their skills and training and it's we've got this disposable society where, you know, just sew a button back on, fix a hole, like, that's right. <laughs> you know, and little things, you know, taking exactly. something in, fixing a hem. That's right. And a lot of our workshops touch on that because we're running them through libraries and cancels and we're not doing any machine work. It's all by hand and it's really simple, fun things, purposeful. What we're doing is creating purposeful items but in that, they're starting to learn some basic skills um, like sewing a button on, learning blanket stitch, things that they can take home. And because they've got confidence now to tie a knot in a thread and sew with a needle and thread, they've got the confidence to give us go sewing a button on or hemming a pair of pants or, you know, fixing that hole. So yeah. it's really important that, you know, when we're designing our programs and our workshops that we offer, that we are ticking a few of the boxes so they all come together to leverage and support these people in the community, learn more about basic skills. Yeah. And so you touched on there like um, fundraising for purpose. So what, what is the fundraising model? How does that work? Like yeah. collecting yeah. clothes so we, and how does that, yeah. Yeah, so how we developed it is we go into schools, we talk to over a couple of different incursions, we talk to the schools about the textiles, where it's coming from, the problems it's associated with, how we can slow down our consumption. And then the next incursion is them at trying to work with the schools, the students, and helping them see the, the textiles as a resource rather than um, waste and what we can make from these resources that the school community um, could either use as part of their schooling curriculum or could sell mm -hmm. to raise funds for their school. And so, and with a lot of schools at the moment, oh, I think it happens all the time, but I'm, I'm being a bit more heightened to the fact that schools are changing over their uniforms and uniforms cannot be re 
used so that they're dead. So if we can take those uniforms and give them a second life as a tote bag or a sports bag or, you know, a, a tablecloth runner, then, you know, that's, like, you know, something fantastic for the school to say, hey, this is what we're doing with our old school, school uniform as a selling point for their school as well as an educational option, opportunity for the students. Yeah, it's amazing. I think that's just, you're right, it's around changing that whole cultural mindset of how, how how people view the resources that we've got out there. Um, and, like, you touched on a lot with the causes of why we've got so much in there. So um, I think so many people, everyone's talked about fast fashion, everyone's talked about, um, you know, it's not that, you know, you buy something, you wear it twice, you buy something from a, it costs you $3 and it lasts once. Um, and it's sort of everyone's like, okay, that's enough, but that's all I can afford or that's all I'm going to get out there and be able to do. Or I'm not going to be able to buy things. But give us a general flavour um, and, like, you're preaching to the converted with me, but I'm sure there's a bunch <laughs> of people eavesdropping in here which are just like, well, hang on, but what, you know, you might feel that little guilty pleasure of buying one little thing for me once. And then what, what does that look like on scale, though? Like how does that have an impact on scale and why is it such a bad thing? Oh, our wardrobes, if we just go to your wardrobe, it's full of clothes that you don't wear. You've you've bought once. I mean, I I'm guilty as well. I've bought I bought once and I haven't worn it again, or I bought once night I, I love that piece and the and even if the colour works, but I haven't got something to go with it because I haven't found that one item yet. You know, it's it's one of those things that we're all guilty of it. We love clothes, clothes are important to us one for we don't want to be walking around nude but because it shows our personality as well so it's just when we're going shopping that we just need to be a bit more purposeful about why we're buying it and how we you know and um when we're buying it and if we make sure that when we do buy it that we love it enough to keep it in our wardrobes and wear it um and make sure that if you don't have items that go with it then you go you make a special effort to try and find items that go with it um, or have those items altered or whatever. I think for me the biggest um, advice for people is to make sure that they're shopping for their colour and their body shape. We're all different body shapes. It doesn't matter if you're a size 8 um, or a size 10. A friend who's the same size as you can look in a garment completely different to you because of the, bod the way your body is shaped um, and, and, and colouring as well. And if we can buy two you rather than what's on fashion um it would make a huge uh, uh makes a huge difference to your wardrobe and making sure that every piece in your wardrobe is actually functional and not just there for looks yeah and i think that that's oh, i mean so many things you just said that they're sort of really ring home but i think that the biggest one is around how personal that, that connection can be, you know, like clothes do make you feel better about yourself. You can look really confident. Everybody has like they go to, you know, like the interview outfit, the, you know, the when I want to feel really awesome outfit, the I looked great at that wedding outfit. Um, and everyone's probably also got the three bridesmaid dresses they'll never wear again. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the one yep. that the aspirational one day I'm going to fit back into that um, <laughs> outfit and be able to walk through and do things as well. But and then especially with kids, I think that it's an amazing opportunity to get get to um, talk to them and help them understand while they're still forming their own identities and forming their own styles and forming mm -hmm. their own um, uh, personalities and how they're going to express themselves through what they wear and how they wear it, that they understand those things because it is quite easy to say, oh, look, there's my idol on TV and they are wearing that mm -hmm. dress. I'm going to buy the exact copy of that dress and hopefully I'm going to look exactly the same in it without going, you know what, you like you said, different shape, could be the same size, different colouring, different everything else. But then how do you work with that? You could say, actually, mm -hmm. like, I like that outfit on them, but on me I know that I'm going to need it tailored this way or, or that's right. you know, that's a nice red, but I don't suit that type of red. If I get a different type of red, that's going to suit me better. Um, and yeah. really start to work with that from the start. That's right. And I think you, you mentioned about tailoring, and that's also really important. Uh, Drew Barrymore did a interview with twins, identical, and they bought hot pink suits, pantsuits, and one was untailored, and one they brought out tailored to fit them, the twin. It looks so much better because it was tailored to shape the curves. Now, when, you know, initially when we all started wearing clothes, they were made to order. 
If you didn't make it themselves, somebody made them for you to fit you like a glove. We can't do that on scale. So they do it as a bit of an estimate of what every size is. It's then up to you to tailor that to you, to make that to you. And if you can't do it, then find somebody that can do it. And it's one of my biggest big bugbears is with op shops is that you go in there and you can't find anything that fits you because it's all, you know, 100 different styles and 100 different sizes. But if people knew how to alter clothing, all of a sudden that op shop would be a lot emptier. Oh, tell me about it. Actually, I love thrift shopping. Like it's one of my favourite things to do for that exact reason. And um, I'm very grateful because I have a daughter who's just hit, um, you know, size four, size six, lady sizes. So there's far more <laughs> options because there's a lot of adult clothing in, 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 yeah. in op shops and thrift shops. But but for that exact reason, and usually they're like really great quality fabrics. Yeah. Um, they've stood the test of time. You know, sometimes they've they've been worn in. So you know, if, yeah. you're, if you're looking for a good pair of jeans, hit a, hit up a thrift shop because they've, right. they're they've already been worn in. <laughs> Um, and like you said, it's just those little things. It's like to go, okay, well, I just need to know how to put a few darts in that, take that hem up to that level, um, fix a few of those buttons. Gee, that would look great with a different collar. Um, oh, you know what? What if I took that top and that skirt and I actually made them into a dress? There's all those like individual things that you can do that are quite easy. Um, and even just flipping things around to say like, oh, you know what? I can turn that T-shirt into a girl's dress really easily and, um, you know, insert YouTube here. And I always find it really fun, like probably you do too, like I watch Queer Eye and you get in there and it's like, yes, that looks like a really nice coat, but, oh, my God, when it's tailored and it just fits you perfectly, mm -hmm. the confidence level, the how it suits That's and right. how it fits, and then you're going to wear it more because you feel better in it, which means you're going to get more value for your money out of it. Like there's so many flow-on effects from all of that, right? Yep. We ran a youth workshop um, in Daniloquin uh, over school holidays and one it was um, revamping your wardrobe or rehashing or pimping, however you want to pivot it. Yep. Um, <laughs> and the girls stamped, they screen printed, they cut up and slashed and tied and braided and, and they had a wow of a time personalising those garments. Now, those garments they might wear uh, only for a short time because they, they love it now, um, but they will wear it to death because they have personalised it and they'll get comments, oh, wow, look at your top. That's so cool. Where'd you get it from? Oh, I made it myself. Like they'll be yes. so, so proud to say that. Um, and, you know, it's just sad that that skill set has been lost at the moment over the years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think for girls and boys, so I think, you know, historically like my grandmother, massive sewer. I loved yeah. to sew. Um I've got my mum loves to sew. My sister's very different. Like I've got one sister who loves to crochet and knit. Like that's her thing. Um, so I think everybody finds their own sort of journey with it. But especially with the boys, like it's really sort of giving them those skills to say, hey, guess what? Like you can be handy outside of a tool. Like you should be able to sew your own buttons back on. You should be able to fix your own hems. Like, um, and as somebody who travels solo a lot, you know, it's just guys, really. Like you should be able to fix your own stuff on the run. Like, really? Yeah. A basic button, a basic hem. If you can do that, you'll save so much time and money. Yep. And I, yep. I, I mean, well, I, I'm a scout leader as well. So I'm constantly um, talking to my parents about sewing badges on, <laughs> going, yes. come on, just learn it's the skill. It's going to be fine. No, it's not that hard. And you know what? The kids can do it themselves. Yep. My daughter taught herself. I didn't show her. I, I don't teach. Um, my own children very well I get very impatient with them <laughs> but she at four she was asking me to tie a knot in a thread and she was it wasn't very good mind you but she was sewing by hand herself because just yep. purely watching me do it yep it, they learn that is cool way. it's fun like to get it out yep. there and to when you've yep. got it and you make it work and you can make cool things and you know I love sort of patching holes with flowers and you know, all sorts of other fun stuff that you can do and get out there and really get in there and work it through. Um, we ran so thinking a, about that. Oh, yep. I was, we just, I was going to say we ran a uh, upcycling, oh, screen printing for youth in Banyul and we had a couple of um, graphic designers now and they were boys. Now they don't have never touched fabric in their life, but they made the awesome screen print um, and printed their own garments and they were so proud. So it's taking their already fantastic skill set of drawing and turning it into another 
another avenue for them. And now they can, you know, potentially go off and use that skill set to make their own teas and small little um, pop-up business. That's amazing, isn't it? And I just think especially like I love a good tea with a logo and a slogan or something mm. funny or not to put on the front of it. Um, so you're right, having this, those basic skills to turn something old into something new with such a simple thing um, mm. is really just an amazing skill set to have that everybody should be able to do and move forward with. One of the questions I was going to talk to you about is fabrics, like different types of fabrics that are out there. What's good? What's bad? What are you finding that's coming through as being wasted? How does that all work? What should we be looking out for? <laughs> um, when you're buying, buy natural fabrics, <laughs> especially if you're buying brand new, buy natural. Um, I'm I'm finding the, the older I get, the more my body is saying no to polyesters and, and man-made fibres. Um, but when I was younger, and, you know, I see it in my girl, um, that you know, and my son, that they don't necessarily their body doesn't necessarily rejecting um, or f seeing effect when they're wearing different fabrics. Um, but maybe because I'm a bit older and a bit more in touch with what's going on, I really, really want cotton based. Um, polyester is still coming through thick and fast. It's by far the cheapest fabric. Um, it's now we're seeing recycled polyester, which is as bad as virgin polyester it still does the same problems um, to our world um it's just that it's you know taken from one product to upcycle it into a uh, fabric um but really we need to just stop <laughs> or juice i mean there is benefits of polyester and we won't we won't get away from it completely because active wear it makes sense to make active active wear in polyester um it it um you know it stretches easy in it um, breathe, they have these, you know, um, uh, specially designed polyester knit and that, that breathe, makes it so it absorbs the water, the sweat off your body and, and so forth. But really, that should where it be stopped. We shouldn't be wearing, seeing it, polyester anywhere else apart from inactive wear, in my opinion. And then maybe um, nylon and those sorts in your rain jackets and, and that sort of thing that we need the moisture, you know, to keep us dry. Um, but we need to see more natural fibres in our everyday clothes. Um, and, yes, we might need to do a bit more ironing, but maybe if we did a, had to do that, you'd be more inclined to wear it longer um, rather than washing it every time you wear it because when you uh, have your clothes at home, just because you wear it, you don't need to wash it. Unless it smells or it's dirty, you don't need to wash it. Um, and every time it washes, it wears your clothing out more. Uh, so if we were a bit more inclined not to wash it because it gets creased easier, then maybe maybe we would wear it more often. <laughs> I'm all for that. I'm all for the less ironing the better, right? So it's just like, yeah. the less laundry I have to do makes my life a lot easier. Um, um, yeah, I'm a big believer in the whole, like, it's not dirty. It doesn't need to be washed. Then let's not, we don't have to mm -hmm. go out there and wash it. And that's not to say, like, yes, change your undies every day, kids, and get them yes, in the wash. But, you know, if your shirt's fine, you can wear it tomorrow, you know. like That's right. And, and learning to use settings on your washing machine, like if you don't like ironing, put the paws on spin dry or spinning mode and just take it out dripping and hang it on the line to drip dry. No ironing needed. Yeah. <laughs> So much better. Um, yeah, and I, I'm a big, I like, uh, I'm a big believer in the, sort of the wardrobes of making sure you get your staples correct. So like, you know, get your base things correct and then having things that you can tweak on and up. So um, when I, I travel a lot, um, and so when I do, I'll go a classic, keep a black dress, but I might have three or four black dresses. And then you wear different jackets or different jewellery to accessorise it differently. Um, um, and try and sort of rotate that around in that way. Um, I think um, men are quite lucky in terms of a work setting where mm -hmm. they could probably get away with wearing the same suit for an entire year and no one would notice. Um, right. Whereas women sort of have a different uh, expectation when they go out in the workplace to do that differently. But there's smart ways that you can get around doing that, right? And we've been conditioned that we have to have a, a different outfit every day. Um, yeah. But there was, oh, men's suiting. Most of it still is allowed, is made to be tailored. So back of men's pants still has a huge seam allowance on it. So they can, you know, take it in and take it out. Women's clothing hasn't done that for years, not decades even. Uh, and I'd love to see uh, manufacturers bring that back in so that we can let out waistbands and side seams and so forth and take them back in as we, you know, shrink and grow and, and all that sort of stuff. It makes it so we can, you know, use our garments for longer.
That's a great that's a great point actually in terms of that initial design function um, in sort of ensuring that that it's uh, flexible for you as you move and grow and and move in and out. Um, so like you said, it's just simple things like that. Having a larger seam so you can let a seam out. Um, uh, having something that's easily accessible to be able to scale in and out. I'm starting to see that in a few of the specialty clothings coming back in. Mm -hmm. They might have an adjustable waistband that's sort of easier with buttons um, or sort of a one-size-fits-all type design modules that sort of fit and cater for many different sizes. And I think that that's really good that that's heading in that direction um, and try and support those organisations where you can. I think um, like most things, um, you can have the biggest impact by doing nothing. Um, yes. So, you know, it, I always said the most sustainable wardrobe is the one that you've already got. Correct. <laughs> um, and, and then if you don't need to, look to see if you can borrow something. That's right. If you're not borrow into going to op shops, find a few yeah. friends that you can swap items with every few months and keep it fresh. Yeah, like there's a there's, stack of those really easy right. things, and there's pop up um, work, uh, online stores that are hiring. You can hire clothes for kids, so you, every time they have a growth spurt, you just send those back and get to the next one. And it would cost you similar if you were buying them brand new, but they're you know they're all being recycled. Yeah, it's amazing reworn. like that. Reworn. <laughs> yeah, reworn. Um, yeah. and, and like you said, just avoiding that purchase in the first place. If you're buying it just because you saw it in a magazine, you thought it's going to look great. One, it probably won't. No. But two, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't need it, you just want it, then try not to do that or find your own version of it. Um, and, um, and find out, you know, find your local fabric store, find your local, um, shop where you can go and buy things and patch things and insert, you know, yeah. insert extra sections or, find a new right. button or learn how to do things. Most of those shops will have little quick videos and YouTube's full right. of them as well as to little yeah. things that we can do so we can all make things better. Um, but th thank you. If you're not an older radar, find one that is great and build a relationship with them. Absolutely. Like you said, yes, if, if your limitations are buttons and hems, um, then find, find a very nice person who can take in a <laughs> seam or fix the jacket to you. Like it's just... Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you know what, even just before, before you know, blazers are a big thing, but before you throw your blazer out, take it to someone and go, what can you do? That's right. You know, yeah. it's going to be a lot cheaper and better um, for you to have, you get a custom piece of clothing that's going to last you the extra mile uh, mm -hmm. rather than gamble on another purchase that's going to sit in the cupboard and do the same thing the other one did. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, Katrina, like we could literally talk all day. Um <laughs> <laughs> whether people would listen or not it's a whole other thing but um thank you so much for joining me um, on the podcast today and really helping us to understand a fitting connection and all the great things that you do um and then also really just advertising to everybody you know if you aren't in the ace hub sign up get in um chat with people it is a great community um to, to meet up with people and learn new things as well so thanks so much for joining me today no thank you so much for having me Hayley it's been a breeze <laughs> <laughs> And thanks everybody for listening to the People Planet Profit podcast. Until our next episode, goodbye.